I'm a rock star. Every day I rock hard. I'm a local local rock star. Every day I rock hard. I'm a rock star. Hi, rock stars. I'm Ali, your rock star bar girl. And today's video is all about the old fashioned. I am so excited to finally be making this video. The Old Fashioned is by far the most important drink that you can know and learn. Um, whether you're a beginner or advanced, you must have an understanding of this cocktail and how to build this cocktail. And so I'm so glad to finally be making this video because I know it's gonna help a lot of you. There are two reasons why it's so important for you to know the Old Fashioned and why the Old Fashioned is so important. Um, reason number one is because the Old Fashioned itself is a living representation of the definition of what a cocktail is. What makes a spirit into a cocktail is exactly what the Old Fashioned is. So that sounds weird, but basically an Old Fashioned is a spirit a sweetener, an aromatic, and a quality ice. These four ingredients form the basis of what a cocktail is, and then of course you can expand on that, but that's basically like the rough heart of what it is to be a cocktail. Reason number two is the drink represents something in the drink recipe world and it represents a certain level of knowledge and experience. The Old Fashioned is an old school drink so it represents classic cocktails but it's enjoyed a revival during this whole craft cocktail boom that's been happening for the last however many years and so it's also super representative of the craft cocktail world. Knowing that drink shows that you know something about the classics and that you know something about craft. So to navigate this video, um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the drink and then we're going to talk about how to make one nowadays and what someone is going to expect you to do if you you're on an interview and you're being asked to make that drink. Um, what does a modern old fashioned look like? Uh, spoiler, it looks a lot like the old school one. But So of course this is one of those cocktails whose origin is disputed and unclear, uh, blah blah blah, but the drink originated in the 1800s and if you were to walk into a saloon back in the day uh, and your bartender made you an old fashioned cocktail, it would look something like this. Like most classic cocktails, the origins of the Old Fashioned are hard to pinpoint. You can find recipes similar to it as far back as the 1860s in things like Jerry Thomas's Bartender's Guide. The modern whiskey-based version is credited to bartender James E. Pepper, who is said to have created it at the Pendennis Club in Louisville, Kentucky, before bringing it to New York City in the early 1880s, and it went something like this. A lump of sugar, carbonated water, two dashes of bitters, whiskey, a lemon peel, stirred right in the glass and served over ice. You probably already know this but just in case for some reason you don't, uh, during the 1920s and 30s in America, uh, we experienced the Prohibition era. Uh, it was illegal to sell, purchase, or consume alcohol, and so bars essentially disappeared. So of course there were underground, illegal speakeasies. As you can imagine, alcohol made in like the bathtub of some basement bar is probably not going to be very good. Uh, so the quality of bartenders, the quality of bartending, and the quality of cocktails diminished significantly. Gross spirit, might as well put a bunch of stuff in it to try to make it taste a little bit better. So that's where this drink comes from. It gets a bad rap because of that, but I've got to tell you, I am a big fan of the Muddle Old Fashioned. Um, it's the version that I learned how to make when I was taught how to bartend in like the early 2000s, and I just think it's delicious. Like, So first of all, you would need a maraschino cherry and a small piece of orange. You're gonna muddle these together with bitters and sugar. 
since it's prohibition and I don't think they were really using simple syrup yet, they probably would have used a sugar cube and a little bit of bitters, two to three dashes. They would muddle that together, and the idea is to moisten and dissolve the sugar cube with the juices from the orange and the cherry. You're basically trying to make like a fruit paste. You would have something that looks like this. To this paste mixture, you're going to add your ice and about two and a half ounces of whiskey. little splash of soda, a stir just to make sure everything is dissolved and mixed together. And as if there wasn't enough going on, you would probably see it garnished with a piece of orange and a cherry. This version of the drink persisted for a really long time. Even after Prohibition was lifted, vodka came along and became the most popular spirit, at least in America, and whiskey kind of took a backseat. But as whiskey began to improve and increase in popularity, things started to change. And it wasn't until the 1980s when a man named Dale DeGroff, who's known as the King of Cocktail, um, was credited with reviving that cocktail. He worked at the legendary Rainbow Room and he created a menu that was inspired by that Jerry Thomas bartending guy that I told you about earlier. Um, he kind of exposed the whole world to the old fashioned again. The modern day preparation of the old fashioned harkens back to the classic simple preparation um, of just dissolved sugar, bitters, bourbon or rye, uh, a large chunk of ice, and a twist of citrus. We're going to build our old fashioned in a mixing glass and then strain it over ice. Because all of the ingredients in this drink are clear, we are going to be stirring it. We're going to start with our sweetener. Always build your cocktails with your uh, non-alcoholic ingredients first. That way if you make a mistake on any of those, you can just dump it out and not worry about wasting your whiskey. We're starting off with our simple syrup. Um, you're not typically going to see bartenders nowadays work with lumps of sugar. So bartenders usually have simple syrup on them, which is simply sugar dissolved in water, typically in a one-to-one -one ratio. For this cocktail, we're gonna need half an ounce, 0.5 uh, ounces of simple syrup. We'll need a couple dashes of a quality bitters. Angostura is fine. We're going to use three ounces of our whiskey. To this we'll add our ice. And with a bar spoon, we're going to stir. When we stir our cocktails, we're doing this for two purposes, both to chill and to dilute the drink. So make sure that you stir it pretty well. The big thing in the cocktail world nowadays is ice. Everyone seems to be talking about what type of ice you're using for your cocktails. Your bar will let you know what type of ice you should be serving your cocktails on. I am going to be going with an ice sphere. Um, I made these with a Tavolo ice mold. Sometimes you'll see bartenders cracking their ice by hand. It will depend on your bar what type of ice you use, but a large piece of ice is common. You're just going to strain that right on top of your ice into your glass and then you are going to garnish this with a peel of citrus. Um, you can make your citrus peels ahead of time and keep them in your garnish tray on a moist napkin um, so that they stay fresh for like a whole shift but it's much better to peel them on the spot so that all those oils that are in the orange peel come out fresh right on top of your glass. Um, I like to rim it around the glass. You'll see bartenders doing that so you really get that orange scent when you take your first sip and then drop it right into the cocktail.
any job that you have. If someone's asking you for an old fashioned, this is what they're looking for. Okay, rock stars, so that's a little bit of the history and a lot about how to make an old fashioned. Definitely make sure that you are comfortable with both the muddled and the classic version of the drink. Um, it's a drink that really lends itself to experimentation. You can play around with the whiskey, with the sweetener, with the bitters, with the ice, um, and really do a lot with it. If you found this video helpful, like it below. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comment section. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at rockstar underscore bar girl, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, rockstars. I'm a rockstar.